always off menu is changed. Does it? Or is it something else? It scares me. And it should scare everyone because it's scary. Good morning and thank you for the opportunity to speak before you today. Uh, I represent the Buckeye Forest Council, we're a statewide public lands protection nonprofit. And uh, I'd like to say or, or urge the, uh, the board to value caution as a very important virtue in, in the area of fracking right now. There's a lot of uncertainty regarding what, just what the impacts may be, especially the long run of uh, both water usage and the actual process of fracking. And I think it, it uh, would best serve the interests of the public to take, to take one's time to uh, you know, spend as much energy and effort and time as possible on studying what the potential impacts might be before <coughs> barking on water sales or further oil and gas leasing. And, and I'd like to focus on the water issue. Obviously, the Conservancy District is, is focused primarily on water issues. And I'd like to talk a little bit about what happens to the water you know, during the fracking process. What are the disposal processes in Ohio? And it's interesting because you know once water is, is used, on average, five and a half million gallons of water per frack, for a horizontal well, it uh, it is contaminated and uh, forever you know, rendered undrinkable. But what happens to that water after that? I think I think we actually should hope it's forever removed from the water cycle. Uh, we don't want it in our, our drinking water. And there are essentially two means of disposal in Ohio. One is class two injection wells, and the other is spraying brine on roadways for dust and ice cream. And uh, that I, I find to be a very shocking practice, very unfortunate. We certainly don't want uh, wastewater going on the road. But, but with regards to the, uh, the injection wells, uh, a national study that reviewed all of the uh, inspections of injection wells, I think in 2007 to 2010, found that uh, one out of every six injection well inspected, and they're usually inspected on a five year rotating basis. Uh, experienced mechanical integrity failures. Uh, that was about, I think, 17,000 injection wells every year. And of those 7,500 wells experienced not only mechanical failures, but uh, significant leakage and uh, well, fluid, fluid migration. So I think it does- That's make nationwide, right, Nathan? Yes. And it includes class one? Not no, this class is just two. class, only solely class two. Well, but I think it behooves the board to, to look at some of this information. And, and well, Ohio, it, you know that Ohio's program is stronger than that national. <coughs> well, it's, it's, it varies state by state, but I, I would not say that Ohio certainly has a strong program. I would just say that it behooves the board to, to consider some of this stuff. Thank you. Okay, next is uh, Doug Cornett. Did you say that correctly? Yes.
Sean put together. Um, uh, I think uh, you need to really revisit this and, and uh, consult with some people that uh, know about environmental regulation and how uh, environmental assessments, environmental impacts should be uh, gauged, how public comment should be conducted, and um, really uh, how you need to go back and uh, review your plans and, and make alterations to those plans uh, when you do receive comment and uh, expert testimony. Uh, this is not being done with that. In fact, there was uh, uh, somewhere in there that there was a thousand acre limit that uh, Sean wants to put on this, which excludes a lot of the leases that uh, you see now. So um, I think uh, that being uh, a board in charge of water, which is an interstate resource, that you need to, to look at NEPA. I think that uh, your interest um, associated with the Army Corps of Engineers, and you should be beholden to need. So um, this is something that uh, is going to come back, and you really need to educate yourselves on this. And um, I don't see uh, a conservancy as being a body that should be in charge of leasing oil and disposing of the waste in a one-way use for the water. So I guess that's about it. Um, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak. Thank you.
Ronald White cannot sell because of decisions the Conservancy District has made. But my neighbors, who I care about a great deal, they cannot leave. They have health issues that I know will be made worse if we decide to fight next to that. One more paragraph. We have to pass to clean it up. But we have given you enough warning and documentation that the long slow wheel of justice will turn itself on you and you will pay, not us. We can say we told you so, so go ahead and do what you're going to do anyway. You can't stand to say no to the money. You think it will do you some good and you could actually get away with this. But you will pay dearly much more in the long run. I will name names. We are giving you another chance to hear us and do something different. We are witness to your decision. And some more research for your decision. Stephen Jansto.